CataractCoach.com Mechanical endonucleus separation using the chopper to separate the endonucleus, separating it from the epinucleus shell in the cortex. So here's a cataract case. Rex is already done. And let's see, maybe going in for some hydro dissection, hydro delineation. Let's find out what's going on here. So a little bit of, uh, looks like a little hydro dissection, maybe a little delineation there now, not quite. There's some delineation. There's that golden ring. So that's certainly a hydro delineation. That fluid wave separates the endonucleus from the epinucleus shell. At this point, you can uh, do a little more high section, perhaps, and rotate it. And let's see what's going to happen here. Certain going in with the phaco probe here, looks like in the left hand. And then there's the chopper for the right hand. And once, let's watch this mechanical dissection. So going inside here, all right, cleaning up some of the anterior cortical material. That's reasonable. Here comes the chopper. Look at that. In that groove that you already created with the hydrodelineation, Using that chopper, look at that, to go 360, go all around. You're mechanically separating out that endonucleus. And then can you just phaco aspirate it? So again, separate out that endonuclear shell, that endonuclear nugget from the epinuclear shell. And there it is. Now you freed up that endonucleus. Look at that, right there. Getting that endonucleus out of the capsular bag. And now it can be easily chopped and just emulsified and phaco pretty easily. Now, we've talked about doing this endonuclear separation, particularly in case of like a posterior polar. But this case didn't look to be a posterior polar. Again, separating that piece, the endonuclear certainly makes it easy. But remember, now you have a big epinuclear shell to deal with. Now, we have videos exactly on that one topic. How do you deal with an epinuclear shell? Because the temptation of a new surgeon, a beginning surgeon, is to, well, just use the IA probe to get the epinuclear shell. And you can, but it's a lot less efficient because the port size is so much smaller, and there's more density in the epinucleus than there is in just the wispy cortex. So here's the all, all the endonucleus being removed now. Beautiful job by the surgeon here. I like the draping, I like the lighting. You may want to add some paraxial lighting. This is coaxial illumination. See the two white dots on the cornea? That's lined up one with each ocular. This is coaxial lighting. That's why the periphery of your video here is so dark. But we could also turn on the paraxial lighting, which is off by a few degrees from your oculars, that'll give less of a red reflex, but better overall illumination. So again, removing it, here comes the epinuclear shell, that came out nicely too, and what's left in the bag is just cortex. So why show this video? Because we gotta learn everything. We're, we're cataract coach fans, we're here to learn everything. Now, was it post your photo? Look back there. Hey, let me tell you about the podcast, Cataract Coach Podcast, top podcast in all of ophthalmology. You will love it. It will teach you to be a better surgeon. Now, looking back there, now it's funny. At the beginning of the case, I didn't think it was posterior polar, but look at that kind of defect. And I think the capsule is fully intact. I think that defect is simply um, uh, in the cortex. So here we go, some viscoelastic going in the eye. I like viscoelastic. Always put some viscoelastic there. It might make life easy for yourself. Now you can come out with a phaco probe and switch over to the IA probe. So, wow, that does look like a little bit of a posterior polar effect. I'll have to go back to the video and watch a little more carefully. Now doing uh, cortex removal with a Simcoe cannula. Not something that's used very frequently here in the U.S., but certainly has its role. This is basically irrigation aspiration. This one cannula, the very tip of it, that the pointed part, has the aspiration, and then next to it is irrigation. So as you use it, it's a mechanical syringe, so you're doing it by hand, and you're able to irrigate and aspirate at the same time. So this was very commonly used prior to widespread adoption of the um, machine irrigation aspiration, the coaxial or even the bimanual. So in cleaning this up with the, the Simco, it looks great. Now in a case like this, we had a funny-looking poster capsule. I would not try to polish the bag too much. But now the capsule looks fine. So what's the better part of judgment here? Let's put some viscoelastic in, fill the bag, get that eye on the bag, call this a day. If there's any little opacity that's left, you can always do a YAG laser down the road. Yeah, there's a little bit of opacity there. I agree with you. Don't touch it. You don't need that kind of grief in your life, especially when you've got a YAG laser, which is such an easy thing to do. Now, delivering the eye in the capsule bag, nice and easy. Looks like a single piece um, acrylic lens, hydrophilic perhaps. And then at the end, let's take out the viscoelastic. Thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. Remember, check out that podcast. The sole purpose of the podcast is to make you a more successful ophthalmologist. Check it out.